450 horsepower V8 engined Toyota Prius hybrid racing car? It sounds ridiculous, but that is exactly what this video is all about. A third generation XW30 Toyota Prius fitted with a big V8 from an Indy car designed to compete in Japan's wildest and most popular racing series, Super GT. This is the story of the 2012 APR Prius GT300. The story begins back in late 2011, when Japan's biggest motor racing magazine, Autosport, claimed that there were rumours going around that independent car constructor APR, headed by engineer Hiroto Kaneso, was building a brand new racing car built around the Toyota Prius Hybrid. It seemed unlikely, but it was absolutely true. The new car was revealed at the 2012 Tokyo Auto Salon. It was to contest the GT300 category of the 2012 Super GT Championship in Japan, where it would take on some of Europe's finest GT racing cars, from Lamborghini, Ferrari, Audi, BMW, Aston Martin and Porsche. A Prius against that lot? Super GT has always been a place where small Japanese tuners can take on some of the world's best GT cars, as well as each other, so it would be a fascinating comparison. You sometimes read that the cars in this class are tube frame silhouettes, but that's not quite the truth. At the time, Super GT's GT300 class had three different types of cars able to race, which would be built to three totally separate rulebooks. You had FIA GT3 cars, no explanation really needed there, JAF GT300 cars, and the wonderfully vague others. We'll get back to the others in future. The Prius, though, was built to the JAF GT300 regulations, which were quietly updated for the 2012 season to allow for hybrid powertrains, something that absolutely suited both Toyota and Honda. The JAF, Japan Auto Federation, GT300 rules were for production-based cars, and they stated that at least some of the base car must remain in the race car, which meant that most teams building cars to this rulebook kept the bare minimum of production car parts. In the case of the Prius, the A pillar, B pillar, half the roof, and some of the front bulkhead were retained. The badges and lights also carried over from the road car, and in terms of the body and chassis, that was about it. One of the key restrictions of the JAF GT300 rules was that the car must use the same manufacturer of engine that the chassis came from, which meant that the Prius had to use a Toyota engine, any Toyota engine. So an ex IndyCar turned LMP1 specification V8 engine was chosen, obviously. What the rules didn't say at the time was where in the car the engine had to be installed. So a mid-engine layout was selected for the Prius, even though the road-going Prius was front-engine. The overall chassis of the GT300 Prius was quite conventional and was in fact extremely similar to that of the team's previous car, the Axio Corolla GT300. Yes, a Toyota Corolla GT car. We'll probably come back to that as well. Indeed, one of the old Corolla chassis was also later converted into a Prius. However, as the Prius was heavier, for reasons we'll come to, than the Corolla, it used thinner walled tubing in the chassis, which saved weight but also reduced the car's overall stiffness. The rear suspension had a pushrod arrangement with inboard spring and damper units mounted on top of the transmission, while the front suspension was a pretty similar layout as well, just no transmission to bolt it onto. The aerodynamics of the car are very much what gave it its distinctive look and they were not just for show. The aero package actually worked. It was initially penned by Caneso as little more than an educated guess and it wasn't tested in CFD or in the wind tunnel. However, Caneso did receive significant assistance from TRD. The JAF GT300 rules stated that the profile of the centre section of the car must remain the same as the standard production car and as the Prius was by design at quite a low drag shape it worked well and it was a big improvement over the Corolla. Downforce generation was obviously key with this being a modern racing car and that meant the addition of a wider body, a flat floor, front splitters and dive planes, a large rear wing sitting above a very large diffuser as well. In fact, the overall package worked so well that Toyota's engineers reckoned that the new Prius had a similar amount of downforce as the faster GT500 Lexus SC430. Not quite sure how they worked that out though, because they didn't have a wind tunnel or any CFD to work off, so I'm just guessing that came off suspension load cells, so not necessarily the best measure. As I mentioned earlier, the car was fitted 
it with a Toyota RV8K engine, a 3.4 litre normally aspirated V8, which was based on the old 2003 to 2005 Toyota IndyCar engine, but it was later repurposed many, many times. The version used in the Prius was quite similar to that used in the Toyota TSO30 at Le Mans in LMP1, and it was also found in the GT500 specification Lexus SC430 in Super GT as well, and the Swift Formula Nippon cars that were racing in, well, Formula Nippon. As GT300 is, at least in theory, a class for 300 brake horsepower machines, that's what gives it the name, GT300 for 300 horsepower machines, GT500 for 500 horsepower machines, it might have seemed a bit like overkill for an ex IndyCar engine to be used in the Prius, but it wasn't really a wild choice at all. However, the engine did have to breathe through a pair of really quite small restrictors, and that reduced the V8's output down to just 450 brake horsepower. 450 brake horsepower in a Toyota Prius. It drove the rear wheels via a six speed Hewlin transmission. Of course, this being a Prius, it was a hybrid. The car actually utilised a production-based hybrid system, although not all of the components came from one specific Prius. This was deliberate, as Toyota wanted APR to feed back on the various system parts to aid them in the development of a potential new mass-production hybrid sports car. Comparing the hybrid system used on the GT300 car to that of a production Prius is quite interesting. The road car version of the third-generation Prius featured two electric motors, one large and one one small. The smaller motor was really only used as a generator while the larger one did most of the traction, most of the driving. The GT300 Prius just had one motor and that was based on the larger of the two motors fitted to the production car. You can actually see the motor here mounted at the extreme rear of the chassis which is not ideal in terms of weight distribution on a racing car and the ultimate weight distribution for the GT300 Prius was 56% rear. One of the reasons for this less than ideal positioning was in theory to allow for rapid motor changes. Something the team behind it hinted was to do with Toyota's desire to learn from the GT300 car and put that knowledge into production development. And the suggestion was that the multiple different motors were being tested behind closed doors using the GT300 car. The battery on the car didn't come from the exact same model as the motors did. At the time, the standard XW30 third generation Prius came with nickel metal hydride batteries, but the estate version utilised lighter lithium iron battery cells, and it was these that were used on the GT300 car. The battery pack was mounted in the passenger footwell of the racing car. Despite its very different application compared to the road car, the hybrid system control electronics were also based on that used in the production car, with the standard PCU being used in modified form, and that was a bit of a process for APR to get right. In fact, I remember sitting in Caneso's office during that first season of racing and noting the number of used and broken PCUs laying around the office. It was evidence of the team's ongoing development of the car. But that process, with the help of TRD, resulted in APR learning how to reprogram the PCU to meet the needs of the GT300 car. Overall, the hybrid system weighed 105 kilograms in GT300 configuration. It had a maximum output of just 25 kilowatts, though the motor was actually capable of 60 kilowatts, the battery couldn't match that performance level though. The car's development was not without problems, and at one point in testing the car caught fire and utterly destroyed itself, although this was caused by a fuel leak and not anything to do with the hybrid system. Another issue for the car was actually shipping the modified hybrid system around. This was fine for most of the rounds of the 2012 Super GT series, where the car was transported by truck, but the third round of 2012 was at Sepang in Malaysia and the freight company didn't want to ship the batteries so the car ended up racing as a non-hybrid at that round. A fascinating detail of the launch specification at GT300 Prius was its rear braking system. It had two calipers per wheel at the rear. The larger of these calipers was part of the normal motorsport braking system, but the smaller one was to ensure that the driver didn't feel like he'd got brake failure on the car once the battery was full. That additional caliper was fully electronically controlled and linked to the control electronics of the hybrid system. It was not connected to the hydraulic circuits of the main braking system at all. However, this twin caliper layout was banned by Super GT and the car never actually raced with it in 
that configuration. In 2012, the competition in GT300 was as tough as expected, and pressure increased when Toyota's bitter rivals Honda turned up after the first three races with its own GT300 hybrid, the CRZ. As the Toyota started to improve, it became more and more competitive, but it didn't match the Honda. It finished 10th overall in the championship. In 2013, two Hondas were up against the Prius, as well as the rest of the GT300 field, but the Prius scored its first class win right on home territory at Fuji Speedway. By then, it had already won a huge fan following. The Honda Hybrid, though, won three times that season and took the title, while the Prius was only eighth, and it finished in the same position the following season. In 2015, the Hondas didn't return, and although the class was getting much, much tougher, especially with the arrival of the potent mother chassis cars, as well as new GT3 machines from Europe, the Prius was third in the championship after a lot of development from APR. By this point, Canaso wanted to enter the Prius in a World Endurance Championship race, and Toyota had apparently encouraged him to do that, but he also really knew that the car probably wouldn't be able to last a full six-hour race. In fact, he thought it might even catch fire if he tried, so he decided not to do that, but he did still want to take on the world's best, and not just in Super GT. To take things to the next level though, APR knew something extra was needed, and the Prius story will continue soon on this channel. If you've enjoyed listening to this hybrid tale from Japan, then don't forget to hit like and subscribe. For now though, thanks for watching, and see you soon down on Pit Road.